Hey everyone, welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. You are here because like me, you are curious. You're curious to know what does it take to take your life and your business to the next level, to achieve holistic success in every area of your life. This is what this channel is about. My job is to bring on absolutely amazing world-class guests so we can dive deep into their mindsets, into their lives and learn from them so we can follow in the same footsteps and essentially achieve the same results that they have managed to achieve. Today, I'm joined by somebody absolutely incredible. She has a fantastic story to share with us and she is she's achieved a lot, seriously. She has done so much, it's incredible. She actually is the founder of Solero Media. She's a brand storyteller, a writer, a speaker, and she's just about to launch her bootcamp and I can't wait to learn more about that. So with that, please help me welcome Meredith. Crawford to the show. Meredith, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Talal. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, and uh, first of all, it's, sorry, go on. No, it's great to be on your show. Thank you so much for the invite. <laughs> you're very welcome. I actually, we connected on LinkedIn, didn't we? We connected on LinkedIn and I just, followed what you were up to and, uh, you know, saw a lot of value there. And I thought it'd be incredible to have you on the show. So you can share the message and essentially the people, the audience can, you know, follow on and learn. You have a lot to offer. So I can't wait to actually start this conversation to dig deep. Thank you. What question can I answer first for you? Well, first of all, Meredith, let's let's go to your story you have an incredible story of how you actually started living in a trailer and now you have achieved a whole another level of success so you know what were the decisions that you made along the way what mindset did you have to develop what internal changes did you have to make and then finally what are you up to these days um and uh, what's next for you that's a big question <laughs> i should have broken it down that's a <laughs> big question <laughs> well for the audience, as you mentioned, I started my marketing journey back in 2010, 2012. Um, and during that period, I was living in a trailer. Uh, the roof had blown off, so I had a tarp for a roof. And it was really a rock bottom time in my life. And I decided that I had to first of all change my circumstances in that I was going to do it in two ways. Um, and so I filled out two applications. The first application was to get an MBA from Arizona State University, W.P. Carey School of Business, which has a reputation for not only producing really well-qualified graduates who are focused on entrepreneurship, but graduates who really operate where the rubber meets the road. And they do hire from non-traditional backgrounds. As an applicant from a non-traditional background, I hope they would take me. The other application I filled out was for food stamps, figuring that if the MBA didn't work out, then I had something to fall back on. Fortunately for me, uh, WP Carey's School of Business did take me, and so that launched me um, into the business world where I could get my hands uh, um, around really what is good marketing, what is good marketing strategy, and how companies of all stripes, whether they're small businesses or startups uh, to the enterprise companies, how they can craft and execute on um, good marketing, sound marketing strategy. And from there, and really maybe two months after I started grad school. I got into digital marketing. Uh, I'm trying to remember what exactly the impetus was. And I think it was an email a friend had sent me, a friend that I had met at a social networking event through a nonprofit about an SEO company looking to hire. And I didn't know anything about digital marketing, but there was something that email that just sparked an interest in I had to know more. And so I've built my career, not actually in SEO, but in email marketing, uh, as well as just 
sound, small business, digital marketing, and also brand storytelling. From there, I went off, I worked for Vidyami and my chair design. Um, I worked my way up from being a account manager um, to the CEO of the companies I acquired WorkStraight um, more recently, and then left to launch my own business, uh, Salerno Media. And going out to launch Salerno, first of all, there is a clear distinction of skills between CEO and founder. <laughs> and I'm diving even more every day into what that distinction is. Uh, being the CEO is difficult. Being a founder, I think, is even more difficult, but it's even more fun because what you're doing is you're creating something from the ground up. So take it or leave it, but it's been an awesome journey. Yeah, and, and that's an incredible story of, you know, to the point where you applied for two things. One was an MBA and the other was food stamps. Uh, and obviously the MBA went through, um, but, you know, that's just for the audience. That's the power of connecting with somebody and following their journey and following their story. Because what Meredith shared there was absolutely incredible. The fact that you don't give up even to the last moment, you're still trying different things. You are trying to make things work. You'd never give up. You never stop. And it shows like her MBA application went through and now she started a whole different journey. She's now the founder of Salerno Media. She has her own media company and she has a whole team working for her. So what's possible for you if you don't give up? Really anything is possible. And yeah. what was so appealing to me about digital marketing in the beginning is that it's really a level playing field. You don't need college degrees to get into digital marketing. You just, and to be good at it, you just need a drive and a willingness to learn and a willingness to make mistakes. And as long as you have those three things, you can do awesome, amazing things. Some of my best best hires have come from non-traditional backgrounds. And every day I hear stories, um, whether there are people that BAMP, the marketing group BAMP, Badass Founders and Marketers um, are hiring, or even some in the, also in the startup world, where they're either college dropouts or immigrants um, who just recently came to the U.S. and just people from non-traditional backgrounds who have honed in to one aspect of marketing themselves experts in this one niche field. Amazing. That's amazing. Right, Meredith, I'm just going to pause the recording. For okay, so Meredith, um, for those people who are not familiar with the world of digital marketing, can you tell us a little bit more about what digital marketing is and why it's so important right now? Sure. Digital marketing in the most simplest definition is really the art and technology of marketing something, whether it's services or product or event online. So unlike traditional marketing where you have television, you have radio, you have the big billboards and advertisements and magazines, everything in digital marketing takes place within the internet. Right. Okay. So we're talking about things like, um, when, when people get emails, when they subscribe to certain emails from different companies or organizations or agencies. Right. So it's emails where you get the email from your favorite company saying that they have a special sale going on. It's websites, it's search engine optimization. So when you type in to Google, um, what you want to find and those results pop up, it's, the art of um, both messaging and the st structure for your website to appear in those Google results. It's ads, so when you go onto social media or even uh, the little top of Google, if you notice, they always say sponsored. Um, those are ads. And it's also, as I just mentioned, social media. How do you use social media to get your message across? 
and to find your customers that way. And for each channel, whether it's social media or email or um, even your ads, they are all require a slightly different strategy and a s different techniques. Mm. Right. So would you say that at the moment, the traditional types of marketing channels like TV, like radio, like the billboards, like ads in the newspaper, etc. Do you think they're kind of obsolete or do you think there's still some value in them? It depends on who you are or, or who the company is and who the entrepreneur is that wants to um, promote their product or services and also what is being promoted. For some industries, they still see a lot of return and there's still an expectation of following traditional marketing methods and marketing channels. For a lot of others though, um, there's less of that expectation and more of an expectation of being online. So some of it is uh, very situational. Right. So it kind of depends on what business area you're in, but also where your target market is. Exactly. And who your target market is, because mm. if you're targeting an older demographic, they're going to be more likely to turn to traditional marketing channels. The younger demographic is more likely to go towards the internet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody is actually a new entrepreneur or they are somebody who's thinking about starting their own business, do you think they need to focus in terms of the online marketing? They need to have an online presence right from the start or do you think that the online marketing, the digital marketing can be done a bit further down the road? It depends on who the business is. I've heard some statistic recently that 50% of brick and mortar small businesses don't have websites or an online right. presence. To me, wow. that just blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. And that's where Salerno Media is really trying to support those businesses and help them see the returns that they can get on uh, from having an online presence. Mm. Now your local bake shop isn't necessarily going to see the same return from going online that maybe your handcrafted jewelry maker who has a store right next door to them um, will see. For the simple fact that it's hard to ship baked goods everywhere. That's a fairly location-based business. Yeah. When people are searching Google for bakeries uh, in a particular area, it's helpful to have an online presence so you, you show up there. But versus say that, um, that jewelry store right next door where you can ship your product everywhere and so you can have an online store in a much greater online presence. Right, so what, what, I, what I'm trying to uh, infer from what you said is that for the bakery maybe, it's not worthwhile for them to start running Google ads and start running Facebook ads rather than the jewelry store. For them, it might actually be worthwhile to run the Facebook ads and the Google ads. Right, and their approaches to websites are going to be different. Bakery is going to have a general approach of here's the type of goods that we bake and the type of things that we can do. Right. Whether or not they do catering, um, are they French bakery, are they more of an Italian bakery, or some other type, versus that jewelry store that actually uh, can put up an e-commerce store and sell. Right, right. Okay, so for the people in the audience who are thinking about opening a bakery or thinking of opening a jewelry store, there you go. There's your roadmap right there, laid out, okay? Go for it and let us know how you get on. Um, so, I Meredith, love using, I have to, if, go on. yes. I was gonna say, I love interjecting with these examples of local businesses because we talk so much in digital marketing and we immediately think tech or entrepreneurship or info products, but really it's for 
everyone. And there's this whole segment of stores that you and I shop at every day um, that is not online. And it's so mind boggling that uh, they're getting left behind. Yeah, yeah, because obviously, at the moment in the digital age, everything is going online. And you know, you might not need to have that sort of presence like the jewelry store where you're running like Google ads and everything like that. And you have sort of like an online, uh, you know, uh, store where people can buy and you have, you know, something like PayPal or uh, other sort of, you know, digital cash register things, you know, attached to that. But you do have, need to have some sort of online presence, like you said, so people can actually find you when you type something into Google. So it, it just depends on where you are and what you do and where your target market is and who they are. So that's really, really uh, enlightening, I guess, because um, I've, I've never actually sat, sat down and broken it down and thought about it like this. And I think it's the same for a lot of people because when you sit down and talk about digital marketing and stuff, the first thing that comes to mind is like Facebook, Amazon, and that's it, <laughs> right? So it's, it's good to actually have those examples of like, you know, local stores, local businesses, small businesses, and how they need to have an online presence as well. Right. No, I'm here in Oakland, so perspective can get skewed by the tech industry, but it's helpful to remember that for most of the country, they're not in tech. Yeah, yeah. And the same goes, I believe, for most of the world, that they're not in tech. Mm. Yeah. So, Meredith, you're also a storyteller. You also help I am. The Yes, you help the brands, you know, tell their story. Can you talk to us a little bit about how, how you actually help them develop their story and tell that story? Yes, so the two really go hand in hand because as Salerno Media and myself as a three Salerno Media support the local businesses, really it's about storytelling. What separates one um, business from another, especially in a commodity market, where you're selling virtually the same thing, isn't so much the product or the, even the service, it's the other stuff. And really it's the story and the emotional connections that your customers form with you. And I love helping small business owners tell their stories because they have such compelling stories. Mm. For Salerno Media, we were formed out of a story. As a CEO um, of the marketing technology company, I had a shooting occur outside of my window one day. Um, it was during work hours and we were in a area of Oakland that is not um, really, where this type of thing just doesn't happen often or at all. And so we had to go through the whole building lockdown drill um, with active shooter. Uh, of course, the active shooter was across the street um, at the intersection, but we could see the events transpire through our windows. Wow. And it, through this incident, it gave me a real sense that if the local community isn't supported, um, the challenges that those who are in tech and who are wealthier and tend to think that they've moved on from and aren't a part of end up coming right to your doorstep. And so that's why Salerno Media is so focused on small business and so mm -hmm. focused on supporting local communities. When I work with small business owners to tell their stories, I like to break it down to them with three keys. The first key to telling their story well is to share their passion. Small business owners are so passionate about what they do, mm -hmm. just like entrepreneurs yeah. that they live and breathe their business and yeah. put in well over 40 hours a week. The second thing is that they need to flaunt their quirks. They need to stop trying to be like everyone else and trying to keep up with the Joneses and just really embrace the things that make 
them as small business owners or entrepreneurs so quirky and so unique. And what this does is that it creates difference. Creating difference is really the basis of good marketing, where you separate yourself out from everyone else around you, particularly if you are in a competitive market or such as a commodity market. Right. Using a example from Oakland, there may be 10 Thai restaurants in town, but my favorite one has this little patio and this really unique archway. And so really I go to it because of the sense that I have when I'm there eating my Thai food underneath this um, beautiful like arch of flowers um, out in the open air. And so, and it's just in this little secluded tucked away spot in town. Wow, that sounds but, really cute. <laughs> it sounds really cute, yes, but yeah. it's, that ambiance is part of the feeling and part of their story. Mm. Right. The third thing is really giving your customers something to share. And this particular restaurant has done it so well because here I am telling you the story of basically every time I've eaten there in this little open courtyard with all the flowers. Yeah. So cool. And that for them to create that environment, not only am I sharing it with you, but it's a place that I take my friends to locally because it has such a great ambiance. Wow, that's amazing. I, I love to go and try that place out, actually. You're, you're making it sound so good and you're making me hungry. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So the, with the storytelling, obviously, with different businesses, you have to tell the story a different way. I'm just wondering if the story has to be different for, for example, um, a small business versus the story for a big business. There are certainly some differences because with a larger business, um, the story in a sense becomes less personal because when you have a company of 500, mm. it's not the same as when you have a company of um, say 10, Yeah, where it's much more personal to the employees and there's for it's also much more personal to the customers things haven't necessarily become as mass produced. Right. So you, you think that with a small business, because they're so close to the customer, they can have like more, more connection with their customers. And so they can share that connection in the story by talking about the little things, you know, that for example, the customer values or the customer enjoyed or the customer, you know, really liked about their business versus a big business, which is more, you know, established. So they're a little bit more withdrawn from the customer, I guess. So they're, they, they have less of that intimate contact with the customer. It's, yes, to an extent. Uh, I was just thinking also of local examples. I went to this coffee shop what was it two days ago to meet someone and it's this little coffee shop to part of the arts district of oakland and because of the location so you have the swanky sofas and lights that you find in places like starbucks or the recently renovated pete's but you also have this full art gallery so you can have your croissant and your cup of coffee and look at all the amazing art produced by local artists. That's so cool. You don't quite have that sense of intimacy when you go to a place like Pete's or Starbucks. Mm. It's not that Pete's and Starbucks don't have great stories and don't tell their stories well, but it's a different sense of draw and appeal. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. And using those two examples, I think like helps you to visualize, um, you know, how they're different. So I think that that's really important. And um, yeah, I love the fact that you use those examples. 
Thank you. <laughs> so would you say the story also has to be different for businesses that are new versus businesses who are older and more established? There are some differences for sure. Businesses that are new tend to focus on what they are trying to do or their founder story. Businesses that are more established tend to focus on what they have been doing already for the customer. Right. Okay. So okay. there's a subtle distinction there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I see what you mean by that. That makes a lot of sense. And for people in the audience, again, you know, depending on what kind of business you have um, or, you know, if your business big, it's small, it's new, it's old. I think we're getting a lot of value from this conversation because Meredith is actually, you know, telling us the, the journey that you need to take in order to tell your story well, which is why I've been asking those questions. So I hope you did find value um, in, in those questions. So Meredith, we, I mean, you've achieved a lot. I mean, it's absolutely amazing from, you know, you, you started with uh, your applications, uh, living in a trailer, and then you moved on to creating a agency for yourself, your own company. Um, you are now a writer, you're a speaker, you help local businesses, you help them essentially, you know, brand and, and storytell. It's absolutely incredible. So how the, the, the question I want to get into really um, is what sort of mindset did you have to develop to do this? Because for a lot of people, they focus on one thing, um, you know, for example, just the fact that they want to say um, grow their business and 24 seven, they'll just be focused on that. But I want to really try and understand what does it take to create holistic success? What kind of mindset do you need to have to go and whatever you do, you find success in that. That is such a great question. At the beginning of my journey, I had the mindset where I was willing to do whatever it took to get a foothold as a digital marketer. And for me, that meant a lot of late nights reading about how to put together WordPress websites or what the latest trends in digital marketing were and just the time spent building my connections within the digital marketing world. Anyone who is serious about networking knows that it takes time and intentionality. Oh yeah. And being disciplined to put that time in was really key at the beginning. Right. Also, Learning, realizing what you don't know. One of the most critical questions I asked in my life was what is the difference between marketing on the brand side versus marketing agency side? Hmm. And I asked a connection that question and it ended up giving me a job. And so reaching out to people with those types of questions and learning from their experience can open up really unexpected doors. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, as I move into the founder phase, the mindset that I have is, again, one of being willing to embrace mistakes and failures, but also one of creativity, connection, and giving myself permission and my team permission to explore. Mm. As we build the Salerno Media brand, we're still in an important phase where it's for experimentation, for exploring what works for us, what doesn't work for us. And there are so many people that I see pigeonhole themselves or try and pigeonhole themselves and their companies too soon and too early on in that fit in their development. Right. Awesome. So Meredith, 
this has been an incredible conversation. Um, you shared so much value with us. And I think I, there's a lot of important takeaways for me as well. Um, especially the storytelling side of things, how that is different for different businesses, different size businesses, businesses who are all of us is younger businesses. Um, and you really broke it down and you used lots of examples, which I think was really important because it really helped me visualize those things and see the difference between the stories of different uh, type of businesses, different uh, size of businesses, etc. And I think the audience must realize just how useful this is if they are, for example, starting their own business or thinking about starting their own business, or they have already established a business and they're thinking about, you know, how they can grow it. So the storytelling aspect is really, really important. Uh, so I just want to thank you for sharing all that with us. Um, I think there was a lot of value in this conversation. I'd love to have you back on. We can dig deep into other things and go down different rabbit holes. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much, Tello, for having me on your show. And I look forward to um, coming back. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll, I'll, it, it'll be absolutely incredible. I'd love to have you back. But before you go, can you tell us a little bit about how can people get in touch with you and find out more about Salona Media and also uh, about your bootcamp when you're starting your bootcamp? And finally, um, how can people help you? Yeah, sure. So, First off, to get in touch with me, the best way is just to email me, Meredith, M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H, at salernomedia.com. That's the easiest, most direct way. Otherwise, reach out to me on LinkedIn. For the boot camps, we have a boot camp starting June 21st and 22nd. It's two-day intensive where it's myself and others from the Salerno team uh, pulling together small business owners in a room and teaching them hands-on digital marketing skills. This is where small business owners take, bring their laptops with them and get be, are prepared to have their marketing plan and channels built out. So hopefully it'll run monthly if the first, if the pilot boot camp goes well. Otherwise, it'll be every couple months. And then secondly, how to help. I'm always interested in other people's stories. So connect with me. I'd love to hear your story. And I just love to meet new people. So I welcome any and all introductions and look forward to those stories coming in. Awesome. Well, guys, there you have it. Our amazing conversation with Meredith Crawford. The story that she shared was absolutely incredible. Right from the beginning, she talked about not giving up. She had two applications, one for an MBA and one for food stamps. But right to the last minute, she did not give up. She was applying for the MBA and that fell through. So make sure that you are following the same advice. She also talked about the incredible event, you know, where there was a shooter outside and the story behind her Solono Media uh, company. And she then talked a lot about storytelling and how you can tell your story in the best way, depending on what kind of business you are, if you're a new business, old business, small business, big business, etc. So absolutely incredible conversation. I've learned lots of new things which I did not know about before and I just can't wait to have her back on so we can dig deep but most important thing was the mindset um, and Meredith actually broke down her mindset where it was back then when she was just starting out versus right now where she's the founder of Salerno Media again absolutely incredible so with that I ask you guys to share this conversation with somebody else who is close to you and needs to share this uh, sorry needs to hear can't talk, can't talk. I haven't eaten um, so needs to hear these messages um, and they they need to actually uh, they'll find value in this I'm thinking about that that tie place that's the problem okay you you it's Meredith's fault okay I'm thinking about the tie place now okay so 
again, um, I want you to share this video, this uh, conversation with people close to you. Also, make sure you leave us some comments. Tell us about your journey, your amazing story. And if you're starting a business, then how are you going to tell your story so you can get your customers emotionally involved? And finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel because guess what? Otherwise, you you will not be part of these amazing conversations with other amazing guests that we're hoping to bring on and so we can dig deep, learn from them and get inside their heads. So with that, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Meredith. Guys, hustle hard, stay awesome and I'll catch you in the next one.